Good morning. Welcome to First Lutheran Church here in Beaver Dam. Today is July 12th. This is uh, a great Sunday. I know it's been humid outside and been warm, but it's cool inside here. And uh, we welcome you to, uh, to worship with us. Uh, I'm going to tell you at least three ways, even four ways, that you can let us know that you are going to be here, that you want to worship with us, uh, or you're going to be at home, uh, as you may be, uh, on the couch or at the table or in your car or traveling, listening. Either way, any of these ways, I pray that your soul will be refreshed like the rain that comes down from heaven. So the first way, if you wanted to worship with us here in person, we just kind of need to, for tracing purposes, we need to know who's here and how many chairs is set up and how many ushers and how much communion is set up. You could simply just go to the Sign Up Genius, and that's on your e-announcements, and that's been posted out there. Uh, a second way, you could, we have a new way. It's called Google Voice. And I, I called this number, it's 920-306-4444. Uh, and that will also be in your e-announcements if you check. You just leave a message and say, hey, I'm uh, Jim Went. I'd like to worship. I'm gonna bring 10 people with me. And then we'll set up 10 chairs off to the side. We'll have communion and, and, uh, and we'll know that you're gonna be here and we can uh, accommodate you. Uh, another way is you could just simply call. You could call me or call anyone in the office th do the, through the week, and we'll sign you up. And here's the last way. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll accept you, and we will work uh, and do our best to accommodate you. But if it's, gee, it's last minute and you just decided, I want to go to church, show up. Come to the e either the 8 o'clock service, this service. You have to wear a mask. I wear mine when I come down for communion. Uh, mask required, uh, or to the 10:30, we we strongly encourage mask, but not required. But show up, and we will do our best to accommodate you. Might mean set up a few chairs, and you know, add a little wine and to the cups and that. But those are the four ways that you can join us here, and it's perfectly fine if you stay home during these troubled times. We will continue to worship through the radio and through uh, YouTube and all the ways that you're used to. Uh, you've read the announcements that were posted. Uh, two I want to raise up is uh, Compassion Camp, great online camp for kids, uh, and then Habitat for Humanity. Look in your e-announcements or your newsletter or online, and you can read more about those two opportunities for young people and, uh, and that. So uh, I think that's enough for today. Let us direct our hearts and minds to worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here and now we acknowledge those times our eyes 
see only our own needs and not the needs of those around us. Dear Lord, you know our sins before we confess them. You know even the things that remain hidden to us. In humility and yet in confidence, we bring before you those things which we have fallen short. You have made us your dear children through Christ, but often we feel we are just ordinary. We settle for a life that may not matter that much, or live with an unsustainable manic drive, grasping and grabbing for something that always feels just out of reach. We listen to the voice of the enemy that says that we just don't matter. Forgive us, Father. Enable us to see what you have done for us and what your purpose is for our lives. Fill us with your grace and inspire us to share it with those around us. Hear the good news. God sent his son into the world. In compassion and obedience, Jesus announced the kingdom and then demonstrated the kingdom through his death and resurrection. He has restored us to who we were meant to be and filled us with his spirit that we might be filled with compassion and obedience for those who are still in need. In Jesus, in Jesus, the free gift of God has been received eternal life. And our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We, uh, let us be seated as we listen to the lesson. The reading for today comes from the 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning at verse 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Go ahead and open your Bibles if you have them at home there. And you can turn to Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 1, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. The parable of the sower. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things and parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were they scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. 
Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell in good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone, let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When any ears of the word of the kingdom does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on the account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth chokes the word, and yet, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In some a case, a hundredfold, in another, sixty, and in another, thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from the coming and living Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Whenever this gospel text, this parable comes about for us to hear and to think about, I quickly go back to our experience where I and my wife and others, youth, where we went to Oklahoma. We went to work to help aid after this big tornado, you know, just blew through um, Norman and Oklahoma City and, and uh, that whole area down there. And we went down to help, to clean up, to be a part of the rebuilding. Now some of our youth were older and they were able to go out and tear down little buildings, shacks, storage units, and, and rebuild them. They were able to use power tools and things to that nature. But the younger kids had to do like the lighter work, the easier things, perhaps safer, food, sh you know, food pantries, shelter work. But one of the jobs that we had to do some mornings with was sowing seeds. Someone had donated to a church in the area this particular type of seed that was going to be sowed in the ditches and some of the, the areas along the road that either had been barren or uh, looked wasted or wasteland and they wanted to beautify it. They wanted new things to grow. So our job was to take these many, many bags of seeds and scatter, scatter the seeds. That was quite interesting because imagine you being a sower and you have hundreds of pounds of seeds and it's warm out and it's summer and you're not really into being a sower and you know, planting these seeds or sowing them, and you're kind of haphazardly doing it fast. And, and as you're sowing it in the ditches and in perhaps some yard areas, you know that a lot of these seeds aren't going to grow because some of them are falling near the road on pretty rocky soil, if any soil, some pretty deep areas and dark and dry, and some up around trees and bushes and that. And you begin to wonder, is anything, is any of these seeds going to grow? What's going to come from this? Am I just wasting my time? So I think of that. I have pictures of that. And I remember as we were sowing, I would say we are sowing the words of God. Our job, our call was to be here and sow the seeds of the Lord, the seeds of the kingdom. Now we have this parable, right? And as you listen to this parable, 
you're probably wondering, which one are you? Jesus tells four, four stories, four quick little stories about the condition of the land, the soil. And as we survey the soil, we are struck by the hopelessness of the first three. The first three. The first is the path, right? You know, seeds that fall on a path and the birds come along and, and eat them up quickly. And then the second is that rocky ground, the rocky soil, where, you know, they, there's not really any soil and they they sprout quickly and, and no root base and they wither quickly by the sun. And then the third is the thorns, right? They fall in thorny areas and bushes. And, and Jesus says this are those who are quickly moved by the growth and the, the, the growing and planting of the seed, but quickly give way to the world. To the woes and the wonders and the great things of the world and even wealth. Or when hard times come along and we just give up. But nevertheless, we might receive it quickly, but we also turn away from it quickly. Other things choke it out. And then the fourth one is the good soil, right? Good soil, the sea can like be planted down in and uh, it can be watered and the roots can grow and it can grow strong and bear fruit and bear lots of grain. But we know and we think about this text that Jesus offers no advice. You know, what if you and I are one of the first three scenarios? We are the path or the rocky ground or we are the thorns. He offers no advice to become good soil. How do we become good soil? Certainly all of us want to bear fruit. Certainly all of us want, want to be good. But he offers no advice. He just says some are here, some are like this and some are like that and so on and so forth. But I think about in Scripture, where we know that Mark says in chapter 10, verse 18, that no one is good except God. I'm quickly reminded of our sin, the original sin. In Ephesians, Paul writes, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, that you were dead in trespasses and sin in which you once walked that we are all, at some point in time, probably one of the three, the path, the rocky ground, the thorny, that at some point, that all of us are like that. But the good news in this gospel lesson that God can change the hard, the shallow and compromised heart, the compromised soil, the hard, the rocky, the unfertilized, that God can change that. That God can give us a new heart. I believe in a God of new life, a God who is in the business of changing our hearts of stone into fertile soil that just one word of the kingdom, one word of God might take hold. We ask God for fertile hearts. We can go to the Lord and ask that the Lord would change our ways, our, our desires, our wickedness. But what I like about this story, there's this subtlety, and kind of like us who were sowing seeds, not really judging the landscape, but just sowing. And the rain from the heavens, the rain of God, rains down on all of us. And the question is, what type of soil did the seed fall upon? 
I think about the graciousness of God planting the seed in this hostile world, a world that seems full of doom and gloom, hopelessness, the opportunity of something good, something that can grow, something that can bear much, is sowed everywhere in this hostile world. And the rain comes down from heaven, the rain of God rains on everything, all of us. The question is, what's the condition of the soil? The good news is that God wants to and can change our hearts of stone and thorny, thorniness into good soil. We can learn from God's ways, from Scripture, from one another. We can just listen to the Word of God and contemplate the Word of God and ask God to simply soften our hearts of stone Pick up the rhythms of the Lord. Be gentle to one another. Offer forgiveness to neighbor. Love the neighbor. Look for ways to diffuse anxiety in the world or, or hatred. Choose peace. Choose joy. Choose love. And choose a fertile heart that love and salvation can grow, that the Word of God can grow, that the kingdom of our Heavenly Father can, can really reign here on earth, that hatred, the work of the devil, can be flushed away, can be consumed by the power of God. It's all possible. Whichever soil you hold in your heart, know that the Lord is waiting to give us a new heart, to free us. See, on the cross, he died for you. He died that you would be free from the slavery of sin, hate. That he has died that you can have new life through him. Receive him, the one who loves you. Soon we will receive his body and blood, a sign of salvation and love. Until then, let us pray. Let us pray this familiar hymn. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. Lord, when my heart is cold, warm it with the day. Lord, when my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Amen. through the waters of baptism we are brought together let us together 
express our Christian faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven, of heaven and, and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's God, only, only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Praying separately in our homes and at church, yet united in the Spirit, let us together pray for all the needs of all the world. We pray for our congregation and for all the churches in our neighborhoods. We pray for those for whom growth in faith is difficult. We pray for farms and fields that are devastated by drought. We pray for all animals in search of water. We pray for everyone who is suffering from the heat. We pray for peace throughout the world, especially in the Middle East. We pray for the government of our country, state, and county. We pray for our society to be purged of racism. We pray for the thousands who each day are contracting the coronavirus. We pray for those without jobs or health care. We pray for medical workers and researchers. We pray for all who are sick, especially Sally, Ed, Davy, Victor, Sue, Eileen, Marianne, Tim, Ellen, Rick, Bill, Darlene, Sandy, Oliver, Judy, Roger, Rosemary, John, Christina, Jerry, Jackie, Ron, Jensen, Amy, and Justin. We thank God for all who have died in the faith, especially Richard Anthus. Comfort Marion and all who mourn, and at the end, bring us all into your eternal rest. O merciful God, receive these prayers and grant us your spirit of peace and joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We acknowledge your offering, offers, offerings that are brought forth to the church or those who are, that are mailed in. All things have their origin in you, O oh God. From these riches we freely give that your church might grow in this place and throughout the world. We thank you, God, for what you've given us and that we are able to get back to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken and given for you. Eat and do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, giving it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant. My blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink and do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer together our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will, will be done, done on earth as, as in, heaven. in heaven. Give us today our today daily, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those, those who, who sin against, against us. Save, Save us from, from the time, time of trial and deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The table is set, our table here at church and your table at home perhaps as well. The table is set with the gifts of God. Receive the gifts of God. Hear the words of God. This is my body and blood shed for you and for all people. Receive me.
the table is set, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be Thanks to God. Thanks be to God. the body of Christ broken and given to you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Receive a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face of grace and mercy shine upon you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.